In this video, we will learn about the basics of hip joint biomechanics. The learning objectives are understanding the basic physics behind the translational and rotational movements, to understand adding and resolving force vectors, learn to draw a hip free body diagram, and know the basics of joint reaction force. From high school physics, we know that the scalar quantities have only a magnitude, like in time, mass, or a charge. Vector quantities have both magnitude and direction, like in velocity, acceleration, or a force. Let's consider a body with its center of mass here. Center of mass is the point where all the forces acting on the body appear to get localized, and any force acting through the center of the mass behave as if it has been distributed to the whole of the body. So, if we apply a force, Along the line of the center of the mass, we see a translational moment. If d is the distance between the initial and the final position, then by Newton's second law, the equation for the force is mass times acceleration. Work done is force times displacement. However, if the force acts on a body at some distance d from the center of the mass, then it produces a rotational motion. Note that the force is now magnified into moment of force, which is obtained by multiplying force and its perpendicular distance from the center of mass. Moment of force is one way to produce a torque or a rotational force. Torque is the product of mass moment of inertia and the angular acceleration alpha. Note the similarity to the equation of force, which is mass into acceleration. Two forces F1 and F2 which are equal in magnitude acting in opposite directions are parallel and non-collinear also produce a rotational movement and are called force couples. Note that force couples is an other way to produce torque. If two forces F1 and F2 are acting on a certain point, in order to know the net effect of these two forces, we can complete the parallelogram like this. And the diagonal of the parallelogram gives the magnitude and the direction of the resultant force Fr. This is called addition of vectors by parallelogram method. For any three forces acting on a body at equilibrium, and if we know the magnitude and direction of two forces, we can compute the third force by completing the triangle. Let's move on to another vector concept. Any force vector F can be resolved into two perpendicular planes in Y axis and X axis. And if theta is the angle between one of the axes and the force applied, then we can calculate the magnitude of the force along these axes by getting cosine and sine of the angle theta. This is called resolving a vector. Now just a quick recap, we know what's the center of mass, a force, push or pull and its equation, moment of force, torque and force couples. Another physics concept to know is equilibrium. A body is at equilibrium when all the forces acting on it are balanced. At static equilibrium, the sum of all forces and sum of all moments acting on the body is zero. We have also seen vector addition of forces and how to complete a triangle and obtain the magnitude and direction of a third unknown force. We can resolve any force into two perpendicular directions and solve them using simple trigonometric methods. Let's now understand the free body diagram of a hip joint. Free body diagram is used to calculate the forces and moments acting on a joint or a body part that is in static equilibrium. To simplify the calculations, we need to have certain assumptions like bones are rigid, joints are frictionless hinges, muscles generate tensile forces only, and we do not include the contribution of antagonistic muscles. For the hip free body diagram, we have a couple of further assumptions like single leg stance, weight of the leg is one sixth body weight. So, 
the rest of the body weight is 5 sixths and it acts through the hip joint. If O is the center of the hip, M is the midline sagittal plane and N is where the abductors are acting on the hip joint. A is the distance between the center of the hip and sagittal plane. B is the distance between the center of the hip and the point of action of abductors. Then the body weight going through the midline produces a force FW and this can be represented on a line diagram like this. Note that the moment produced due to the force of the body weight tends to pull the rest of the pelvis down like this. Normally, the body doesn't allow this and the abductors produce a force FAB that keeps the pelvis horizontal and stable on the hip, also called squaring of the pelvis. The combined forces of the body weight and the abductors produce a vertical joint reaction force at the center of the hip. Due to the anatomical construct of the hip, the actual joint reaction force Fj is set at about 30 degrees to the vertical plane. This is the end of part 1. Please proceed to part 2 to know how to calculate joint reaction force in a single leg stance with gain and weights. Thank you.